Hi, this is The Business Guy. So how do you protect $1 million in assets? I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do. I'm gonna tell you the biggest mistakes people make, and I'm going to give you an example of an asset protection plan for a $1 million or more portfolio. After protecting several billion dollars worth of assets, including bank accounts, investments, real estate, and other assets over the past 33 years, and running the largest asset protection firm in the country, we have proven what is the most reliable and comprehensive comprehensive asset protection trust setup process you'll ever see on YouTube. Over the years, individuals have paid us between $25,000 to $100,000 or more to learn this exact process and set it up for them, and you'll learn it on this video for free. Now, the first thing on our list is to assess your level of risk. Are you in a lawsuit now? Is one threatened? Are you in a high liability profession? Who are you up against? Is it somebody like Wells Fargo or a street person? Is it verbal or are you getting demanded? and letters from a lawyer to pay their client $10 million. Next, we need to ask how much you have to protect and what type of assets. Now, logically, the value of the assets come first, but we're dealing with human beings and people usually like to describe their problems and get that off their chest first. How much you have to protect and what it is is a big deal because that determines what we recommend. I mean, no sense in somebody spending 20, 30 grand or more for the best protection if they're just barely scraping by till next payday. So say someone has a million dollars or more to protect and the bulk of it is in cash and stock. We all also protect real estate and other assets as well. So based on that information, we need to figure out the type of asset protection structure to set up. Should we set up a trust or use some other legal tool? Many people get stuck at this stage because there are many different types of trusts. But believe me, it's much more simple than it first seems because if we're going to protect $1 million or more, nothing has worked better for our clients than asset protection trusts. Now, there are two broad classes of asset asset protection trusts, domestic and offshore. And then there's something right in the middle that's a hybrid called a trigger trust that is a domestic trust at first that becomes an offshore trust when the need arises. And we're the only ones in the country that can set up a trigger trust because it's our registered trademark. Now on the domestic side, if you break it down state by state, there are 17 states that offer asset protection trusts and South Dakota comes out on top. The problem is we've seen domestic trusts penetrated by domestic courts, and in most cases, we see judges in one state ignore trusts in another state and order the seizure of assets. And since a local judge has jurisdiction over a local trust and trustee, a domestic trust ties your hands because the assets are in the judge's reach, and the judge knows it. So that's why we often go straight for the most powerful asset protection tool, an offshore trust in the Cook Islands, or if you're already in a lawsuit, a Belize trust trust because the Cook Islands has been shying away from setting up trusts for people already in the midst of legal battles. So with the Cook Islands Trust or Belize Trust, as well as a Nevis Trust, by the way, we can protect you from almost any legal threat to your assets that you might run into. So here's how it works. Now, when we set up a trust, we send you a trust questionnaire. And on the questionnaire, we ask you what you want to call the trust, such as Titan Investment Holdings Trust or Emerald Mountain Trust or Magnuson International Trust. We next ask you who the first beneficiary or beneficiaries will be. With a Cook Islands or Belize Trust, you can name yourself as a beneficiary and it still protects your assets. In most jurisdictions around the world and most U.S. states, we can't set up your own trust as the trust settler and have you be as the beneficiary of the trust and protect your assets. So that's why it's important to choose the right jurisdiction. And then you tell us who you want to be the trust beneficiaries after your passing. So you have a state planning built in. You'll sign the trust. Our trustee law firm will sign the trust. And so that you can control the trust assets while the waters are calm, we stick an offshore LLC inside of the trust and make you the manager and signatory on the bank account. Now, when you need our trusty law firm to step in to protect you, they can jump in as LLC manager so that your assets are safe and secure. That is, when your friendly neighborhood judge says, give me the money, our attorneys in the Cook Islands or Belize say, sorry, you don't have 
jurisdiction here and all of your money in the trust is safe and secure. Now you can get to it whenever you want, but your opponent and the nasty lawyer that has been breathing down your neck cannot. Now as promised, here's a crucial mistake people make. Thinking because one type of trust can protect your assets from lawsuits, that all trusts protect your assets from lawsuits. Race cars and dump trucks are both vehicles, but you can choose one type to drive around a track really quickly and another type to haul a heavy load of gravel. The same thing with trusts. Living trusts are great for estate planning to pass your stuff along to your kids when you die, but they're terrible for asset protection. A properly drafted asset protection trust with a proper trustee in the proper jurisdiction can keep judgment creditors hanging in the wind. It can also have estate planning provisions so that your kids get your stuff when you're no longer around. Now here's another mistake or more accurately a misconception people have. Many think they can put domestic real estate into an offshore trust and it's protected. Not quite how it works. We can protect real estate, but not by putting it directly into an offshore trust. Why? Because local courts have jurisdiction over local real estate. The judge says, I don't care if you have that fancy dancy trust, the real estate's here and I'm gonna take it. So what do we do with real estate? What we do is this, we use a different type of trust. First, we put each property into a separate land trust for privacy of ownership. For rental properties, we set up LLCs as the beneficiaries of each land trust for lawsuit protection. Finally, we record equity stripping line of credit mortgages against each property. If needed, we get a third party lender to buy the mortgages and place the proceeds in a you can't touch it account in your offshore trust. Now here's an example of an asset protection plan we set up for one of our clients. Danny called us in a hairy automobile accident lawsuit where he was being sued for $3 million more than his insurance covered. He had a $1 million stock brokerage account. Then he also had a house in New Jersey with $700,000 of equity and three duplexes with $500,000 of equity each. So what we did is this. We set up a Cook Islands Trust that owns 100% of a Cook Islands LLC. And we could have used Belize as well, but in this case, we used Cook Islands. We opened a bank account and stock brokerage brokerage account in Switzerland in the name of the LLC and then transfer the funds into the account. Now he didn't have to sell the stock. We just did a transfer in kind. So this was a tax neutral transfer. He's the manager of the LLC and the signatory on the bank account until he needs our law firm trustee to step in to protect him. For his real estate, we put each property into separate land trusts. So he owned them privately. We set up three LLCs as beneficiaries of the land trusts that owned his rental property properties, so he has lawsuit protection, and then we slapped equity stripping mortgages against each property to suck out the equity. Then if needed, we have a third party who can buy the mortgages and then put the proceeds into an untouchable account in his offshore trust. Now in this case, Danny bought the package that includes tax planning. So the next step is we hooked him up with our licensed tax advisor who was able to save him in this case, $300,000 in taxes using some advanced tax reduction strategies. Now it really depends on your situation but most of our clients who employ the tax strategies of our skilled tax advisors are able to slash their tax bills by a head shaking amount. Now this is done by using domestic tax strategies straight out of the US tax code. No guarantee of course, because everybody is different, but in most cases, our clients can save substantially by taking advantage of little known tax strategies that our professionals put together. Again, the tax portion is not a do it yourself project. You wanna make sure you have a licensed and experienced tax advisor to to make sure that you're obeying all the tax laws. So when his opponent saw the insurmountable wall that he had placed in their way, the contingency fee attorney that his opponent had employed settled for the insurance limits. And without it, his investment account would have been stripped bare, he and his wife would have been left homeless, the rental property seized and sold, and he would have had to start all over again. This isn't just a story. This kind of thing happens every single day. One day everything is fine, and then a little while later some lawyer is auctioning off your house. So what do we do to prevent it? At a high level, we first need to remove the assets from the jurisdiction. For real estate, since you can't move it, we have to remove its value with 
equity stripping strategies. Why? Because no matter what kind of fancy structure the assets are in, if the assets or the value of the assets are within the reach of the courts, your opponent's attorney can find some type of loophole, some type of argument to get to them. And if you have a results-oriented judge, that judge can justify why your assets should be the other guy's assets. I mean, we've had client after client where the judge didn't like our client, didn't follow the law, and just followed his or her own gut and plundered his or her wealth. So if you're in a lawsuit or have a lawsuit coming at you or are worried about lawsuits, you need to take action. Set up the trust, set up the companies, set up the accounts, get on the phone, get on our website, assetprotectionplanners.com, and fill out our contact form, and it's time to take action before you're kicked out on the hard cold street, living under a bridge, drinking wine under a paper bag, wondering how something like this could happen to you. This way, your assets will be safely held within the reach of your family instead of everything you own being up for grabs. Remember, hiding doesn't work. Whatever's hidden can be found. And if they ask you if you have it and you don't reveal it, that's perjury and you can go to jail. We have people who think they can move money to mama and then the courts turn around and sue mama to get the money that you fraudulently transferred to her. It doesn't work. Don't pull a loved one into your mess. That's not a happy day on Thanksgiving. But with an offshore trust, this isn't a problem because you still have access to all of your money. However, your enemy at law does not. Now, here's the cool part about a Cook Islands Trust or Belize Trust. Not only do their laws offer some of the most powerful asset protection on the planet, but the cost is reasonable. Now, it's not cheap, but it's reasonable, especially compared to losing everything you have. In fact, our CPA tells us it's tax deducted to set up. Plus, when combined with our tax planning package, most of our clients stand to save tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars or more in taxes. So if a current or future potential lawsuit doesn't go your way, your assets are as protected as can be from anyone threatening you and your family's well-being. Now be careful. When you're creating a Cook Islands Trust or Belize Trust, you'll likely be questioned in the courts why you did it. Now here's some insight. Most people would think to say because it was for asset protection from lawsuits, but a more acceptable answer in the eyes of the courts is international diversification and estate planning. For example, a U.S. trust in most states can only last 21 years after the death of the settler, and that's you who set up the trust. Cook Islands and Belize Trusts can last forever, providing for future generations. So if you want your kids, your grandkids, and your great-grandkids to be singing your praises for generations, I know of no better way than an offshore trust because this is not available with most U.S. trusts, which is why I made this full guide showing you exactly what to do, what to expect with the Cook Islands Trust or Belize Trust to protect a million dollars or more in assets. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is The Business Guy, and see you in the next one.